This is an ABC News special report. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Carl. We're coming on the air right now with breaking news from the Middle East. Hamas has just released 13 Israeli hostages, including two Israeli Americans. Their names, Aviva Siegel and Abigail Edan. Abigail Edan was taken hostage on October 7th when she was just three years old. Her parents killed right in front of her on that day. Abigail turned four on Friday, but we are told now that she is among those back in Israel and receiving medical care. Additionally, four foreign nationals have been released, including three citizens of Thailand and one from Russia. This is a fluid situation as we enter day three of the four-day ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas. A transfer of hostages yesterday was, was delayed for several hours as Hamas accused Israel of violating the terms of the agreement. Eventually, those differences were worked out. Yesterday's exchange included seven Israeli children and six women, as well as four citizens of Thailand. Israel, in turn, in turn released 39 Palestinian prisoners, and video showed many of them receiving a hero's welcome in the West Bank. In the first two days of this ceasefire agreement, Hamas has freed a total of 26 Israeli hostages. A total of 50 are to be released over the totality of this four-day ceasefire. For more on this, we go right to Tel Aviv and Matt Gutman. Matt, what more can you tell us? Stand by. Stand by. I'm... Hey, Matt, can you hear us? I can. Hey, Matt, give, give, give us John, the very latest. John, as we latest. understand it, the... As we understand it, John, the convoy of Red Cross has driven north in the Gaza Strip, delivering 13 Israelis to a specialized IDF unit. Twelve of them were then transferred to the kibbutz of Berry, that blitzed out kibbutz where uh, Hamas attacked on October 7th. One of them was flown to Israel via helicopter. Now, another four hostages, foreign nationalities were driven elsewhere driven south to the Rafah border across. We understand they're going to go through Egypt. Unclear where they go after that. Now, it's important to note that we understand that there are two American citizens among those who were released today. One of them is Abigail Moore Adan. She is four years old. She just turned four on Friday. She was in one of these communities when Hamas attacked. Her father was shot while holding her in his arms. Her mother was also murdered. That orphan tried to escape. She ran to a neighbor's house. The neighbors took her in. They were taken hostage, but her two siblings managed to hide out in a closet. They survived. They are okay. Uh, we also understand that Aviva Siegel, another American, she's 62 years old, has also been released. Her husband remains in captivity at this point. It was a little bit different than it has been in previous days. The Red, the Red Cross taking possession of those hostages released by Hamas. Typically, they've been driving them south. This time, they were picked up directly by an IDF specialized unit. This is the third day of these hostage releases, and each one of them has been different. Every day, there's been some sort of surprise here. But so far, John, and critically, this ceasefire is holding. The swaps are progressing. Of course, in exchange, Hamas getting 39 prisoners each of these days, Palestinians, women, and teenagers. They have been released from Israel. Israeli jails and sent to the West Bank where they live. That has been received with jubilation in the West Bank. Also, a lot of aid. About 200 trucks a day have been sent in from Egypt into southern Gaza, into the north of Gaza. And that was part of the dispute yesterday. Hamas said that not enough trucks managed to get from the south of Gaza to the north Gaza. They said they wanted more. Eventually, through the mediation of Qatar, Egypt, and U.S., that was worked out and the hostages were released. But that was a seven-hour standoff with the hostages sitting in those vehicles for hours and lots of concern on both sides that this whole thing would fall through. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu even con uh, convening his war cabinet. That's how bad it got. But again, so far, three days in, the ceasefire is holding. The hostages have been released. And they're now in Israel, John. And, and Matt, just as a reminder, this is a four-day ceasefire agreement for the release of some 50 Israeli and Israeli dual, dual national uh, hostages. 
uh, in exchange for the release of 150 Palestinian prisoners. But the 50 are women and children. That was the agreement anyway. And I spoke to Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, earlier today, who said that there were three, um, there, three Americans that were to be part of this in total. Two adult women and, of course, Abigail Idan, uh, the uh, now four-year-old uh, Abigail Idan. Do we have any indication uh, about that third uh, American, of, of, of the American woman, that they were hoping to be part uh, of this agreement? Tell me when you want me to answer. John we, don't have, John, we have no indication that the third American has been released. We don't know where they are. Um, Israel, the United States, obviously highly concerned about it. They are pressing for the release. There is another option that's tomorrow. A batch of at least 10, possibly 13 or more hostages could be released. Others from foreign nationalities as well. Obviously, the U.S. has been pushing very hard for the release of Americans. Um, and, of course, there is the option to extend this ceasefire. It's been designed to last for four days, but Israel has given Hamas the option of extending extending it for 24 hours for each additional 10 hostages that are released. Um, so that could happen, and we understand that it might even happen for two consecutive days. All of this remains in the air. What we do know for certain is that Israel has made it very clear through its defense minister, through its uh, chief of staff and the prime minister, that as soon as this ceasefire ends, hostilities begin. They will begin their war on Hamas again, again, trying to say that they're going to destroy it, demolish it completely, and try to create a new order of some sort in the Gaza Strip, John. All right, Matt, thank you very much. We'll get back to you as you learn more. But I want to go right now to the White House, where obviously uh, President Biden and his national security team have been following this very closely. Mary Alice Parks there on the North Lawn. Mary Alice, what have you learned? Yeah, John, no formal statement from the White House yet with this news. I wouldn't be surprised if the president uh, came in front of the cameras today. He will want to talk about this. We know the White House has been making sure that everyone knows, the world knows, that he has been heavy-handed in this, personally involved on the phones uh, yesterday, on the phone with the emir of Qatar, uh, wanting to make sure that, that this was going forward. As you were just talking about with Matt, John, we know from the White House that they were hoping that three Americans in total, two women and one child would be released as a part of this deal over the next few days. So still, obviously, there will be pressure for an additional American Israeli dual citizen to be released. Uh, but no doubt this is huge news, wonderful news for the White House, uh, for the world, and they will want to celebrate here. It was so interesting listening to the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, on the show with you this morning as he talked about how these families are going to need the world support as they their loved ones deal with unbelievable emotional, psychological uh, trauma after this experience. He said that Israel and other countries are pouring resources in to make sure that those families have what they need. These hostages now released have what they need, uh, but they were just talking about the unbelievable, unthinkable, unspeakable experience that they must have gone through. John. I mean, unspeakable indeed, Mary Alice. I, I know that President Biden had taken a, a particular interest in the in the plight of Abigail Idan, who thankfully we hear is is, is now safely in Israeli hands. Uh, but he had spoken to her family. Um, I, I imagine that's one case in particular we will hear uh, the president talk about. Absolutely, because, of course, she was the youngest of those American hostages, uh, those dual citizens uh, that was taken. We know in total, 10 American uh, hostages, nine citizens and one green card holder, but Abigail, the youngest of the group. So such wonderful news that she is among the re those released. Uh, I imagine the president, uh, knowing him, is probably trying to get in touch with her family right now. Uh, this was clearly a very personal case for him, but, uh, but the case of all of them. I mean, this is something that this White House has been working on nonstop. His teams have been working on nonstop. A huge priority for the president. And we've seen his teams uh, really doing the personal diplomacy, too, flying throughout the region, trying to work on this and talk closely to the Egyptians and the Qataris who have been these key mediators in all of this. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Mary Alice. Uh, let's go back to Matt Gutman in, in Tel Aviv. Matt, t walk us through the process now. I mean, particularly uh, with with Abigail uh, Idan, you know, again, just four years old, uh, going through all the hell that she has gone through. What what, what is the process now as she uh, is back in Israeli hands? You know, there are different processes, John, for different ages. 
when everybody crosses through, the first thing that happens, and they've already been inspected by the Red Cross, given what they call uh, an optical check. They just look at them to see if they're okay, okay, and if they need immediate medical assistance. Then they'll be transferred to the Israelis, and that medical team from the Israeli military unit that met them right there in Gaza itself would give them another cursory medical check. And once they cross into Israel, there is a whole team of psychologists and additional doctors on call ready to treat them. Then the adults will be given a quick debrief by Israeli intelligence. They'll ask some quick questions about what they remember. The children will not be asked questions. They will be handed, all of them will be handed phones to make that first phone call with their loved ones, the people who crossed over today. It's been 51 days since they've spoken to their family members. So there's that. And then the children, especially Abigail Moridan, she is an orphan, remember? She's going to be reunited with somebody right there in the base, and they're probably going to fly them to Schneider's Children's Hospital about 20 minutes from where we are right now. And they're going to be separated from the rest of the hospital, given some time and some space. Obviously, a massive amount of psychological support, but also a lot of love from family members, people who are still alive, the neighbors that are still alive. They're going to try to create a sense of familiarity for her, uh, get people around her who she knows, who she's familiar with, and try to just take it very, very slowly, this rehabilitation process that could take a very long time, especially for someone as young as Abigail, but obviously for all of them who've suffered tremendously uh, over the past seven weeks. John. And, and, and Matt, when you, you think about the, the, the nature of hearing this news for the families of these hostages, so we have uh, another uh, 13 Israeli and Israeli dual national hostages who have been freed. That is tremendous news, good news, relief for those families. But the others that were awaiting to see whether or not any of their family members were on the list. Let's remember there are now still, uh, at, at, what, another 170 or so hostages uh, being held right now by Hamas. You know, there's this brutal choreography that goes on, John, every night before the hostages are released. Phone calls go out. Every single family has a military liaison who communicates between them and the military. So they know who's on the list. And the list goes out from Hamas typically the night before. It's not always 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. So they call everybody, everybody, to let them know if their loved ones are either on the list or off of the list. And this has happened now for three straight nights. I suppose it's going to happen again tonight. Um, and for the families who don't know if their loved ones are going to be released, it is absolutely agony. So they have been working through this for weeks, but all of them tell us that they're like a family at this point and they want to celebrate the wins and successes with the rest of their family and they hope to get their loved ones back at some point. But it's going to be very difficult, especially for the male soldiers who are left behind in Gaza, John. All right, Matt, I want to turn right now. We have on the phone David Siegel. Uh, he is the brother-in-law of Aviva Siegel, who has been released, one of those released today. Mr. Siegel, uh, thank you for joining us. Have you had any contact yet, and do you have any more information uh, about your sister-in-law? I don't have any direct information. Um, my older brother, Lee, who lives in Israel, contacted us earlier when it became known that Aviva was on the list. We were overjoyed couldn't believe it really we had prepared ourselves for her not to be on the list based on the information in the news and other information we had received um so i don't know more about how she's doing her physical well-being her emotional well-being but we're just ecstatic of course we're heartbroken that my brother keith is not on the list and um He's 64. We don't know when he'll next be in a grouping that will be released. Oh, just, just absolutely heartbreaking. 51 days since uh, they were taken hostage by Hamas. Had you received any indication of, 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 of even whether or not they were alive, confirmation of, of anything regarding their condition? The only information we had received very early on was there was a piece of a video showing Keith and his wife Aviva in his car being driven by one of the Hamas terrorists into Gaza away from their kibbutz where they had been kidnapped. But since then we've not had any reliable information about of course their whereabouts, but not about their well-being, no communication, just as been the case with the other 
hostages. Very and, difficult and, and challenging for us. And, and that video would have been from October 7th. Right. It was actually posted by Hamas on one of the uh, streaming platforms, Telegram. Uh, and someone who was looking at it noticed, and, and who knows Keith and Aviva said, that's Keith's car, and that's how we discovered it. We're, we're all learning of this as it's happening. Did, did you get any advance notice? Did, did you hear about this before the, the, the world found out that your sister-in-law was freed? We heard from our family in Israel that they had been notified by the Israeli Defense Force, by the Army, that she had turned up on the list. We've had outstanding communication from the State Department, the Richardson Center, the Foley Foundation, many updates ever since this all started, and they are in the loop, as it were, as much as anyone, and they weren't aware, hadn't shared with us that uh, she was on the list. So. It may have happened uh, on, on relative short notice that she was on the list. It's really, it's hard to know. So we, we had found out, but only a little bit before it was already pretty widely disseminated. And do you have a sense, have they given you an indication of what happens now? Uh, they told us um, about how the hostages will, well, they have the initial assessment, very rapid assessment by the Red Cross, and then uh, the Israeli army um, has interacted with them, and then they will be taken to a hospital in Israel for physical and um, mental health assessment. Um, their children, they have four adult children, Keith and Aviva. They, of course, know that they've been released. I don't know the details of when they'll be able to reunite with their mother, um, but I think it will be soon after she is um, assessed for any kind of physical or emotional needs that are acute. Well, we, we certainly hope so, and we certainly uh, hope that we'll hear news on your brother as well. It's got to be an incredibly heart-wrenching bit of news. I mean, it's... It it's, is. It's uh, amazing and wonderful and wrenching and heartbreaking all at the same time. And, of course, we just ache for the other hostages. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, well, yep. thank you. Thank you for taking time to talk to us. And, and again, uh, we, we wish you all the best. We wish uh, uh, all the best to, to your family and for, for good news to come on your brother. Thank you, David Siegel. Thank, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.